On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are here in the warehouse with my 2003 BMW X5 that I'm gonna sell for $1. And today, we make some more progress on it. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jay Argo and today, like I said, here in the warehouse with the 2003 BMW X5 that has 250,000 miles on it. And today, we're gonna get as much work done as we can. I don't know exactly how much that's gonna be, but as you can see here, I just got back from O'Reilly's where I picked up the gigantic oil drain pan. This should help a lot. Uh, a pan to put underneath it because it keeps dripping cooling everywhere. Some oil absorbent and uh, a bucket, well, that's not from our rallies, but a, a do it right bucket for the cooler. So let's get underneath this thing, pull the drain plugs. It's gonna get it all, you know, new oil, new coolant, and of course, an entirely new cooling system. So we'll just start taking things apart. And of course, are you, you gonna take that one zip tie off, call it done? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I fixed it. 100% Jake is here. And uh, he, of course, has been building his three series for a while now, his E46. Very, very similar cars. It does look very familiar. Yeah, right? exactly. He's like, no, same engine. no difference. Camshaft, right? Isn't that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he loves doing window regulators too. So I, I figured I'd let him do whatever he wanted. Window <laughs> regulators. I'm gonna try to do this without getting covered in oil. We'll, we'll see if it works. I hate to do this, because as soon as you put the ratchet under, it's when it comes out, you know? It falls out and gets all over your ratchet. Oil everywhere, instantly. Typical oil change. <laughs> it actually got tighter. Way tighter. So I didn't bring a trim tool and Jake was like, no, nah, we got a screwdriver. <laughs> Honestly, it's just real bougie that this actually has fasteners on it. My that, car- That's true. My car is quick release. This all is just sitting there. You can just take it out in 15 seconds. <laughs> Maintenance is very easy on some BMWs. Yeah, it's a feature. So we're removing this because I was trying to do the uh, oil filter here with the correct tool for the job. And that's because we don't have a 32 or whatever that thing is over here. Oop, thank you. Perfect, perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and use the old adjustable slash crescent wrench there. Cause we got that new fan and a new clutch and- Oh, it's a clutch fan. Yeah, we got a new everything. I forgot. Yeah, automatic cars have a clutch fan, manual cars always have an E-fan. That's right. We got all the screws out of the under tray. The oil is drained down. There's coolant. There's The coolant leak is so big. The coolant was like draining out of the under tray here. So I'm gonna try to not get it all over me. I have a feeling that's gonna be a tall order. Okay, I did let it drain a little bit. That is nasty. Now, hopefully, we can get to the lower radiator hose, which we definitely can. That is, uh, I think that's our leak. There is so much coolant on that lower hose. Oh, you know, it could be the coolant sensor too. The temp sensor's right on top of that. If you guys look, you can see it kind of juts up there. So that's the lower temp sensor it looks like, but that's our leak. And also it looks like there might still be a little bit of a leak over here. Who knows? Replace it all. Get the coolant out of here. Might take a while. So we'll be right back with you. It'll take like an hour. It just always seems to take an hour to drain all the coolant out. All right, let's demo this window. <laughs> cool. That's a nice sound, huh? Captain Crunch. So there we have Jake and our crunchy window regulator door. And here we have our new window regulator. This should solve some problems. Wow, that is super simple to do. With the air box out of the way, you can see there's lots of room to work. There's just two tins, one there, one there. And of course, pull the clamp off of uh, the hose into the intake. So that gives us plenty of places to move around. Uh, now I'm gonna just start unhooking the hoses and popping stuff off. Uh, it's all pretty much quick disconnects. And we can also pull out these tins that are actually holding the radiator. So get these end caps off of here. Don't break this thing. That holds the whole front together right there. Before I get too much of the radiator out, I'll pull those Torx bolts right there. 
to hold the condenser to the radiator. And then we're home free pulling the front end off. And we are back now with a whole bunch of specialty tools. We got the uh, coolant vacuum system, oil filter, wrenches. I don't really need those for this, but I did need was a 36 millimeter. That's a big old socket right there. That will let us finally get the uh, oil filter cap off of that because it's a cartridge filter. We've got all the tools for that. Let's get to work. And now we've got the oil change all wrapped up. That's put back together, cleaned up, and I got the bolts out of the radiator here, those two screws that go back into the condenser, hold everything together. So for the first time, we can remove, I say that, <laughs> the radiator. What are we catching on here? Not too many things. There we go. Wow, this radiator has been in here for a long time even if it was changed. Yes, I know the fan shroud needs to come out, but it won't. So we're taking the radiator out in hopes that we can get the fan shroud out after. Because we've tried everything with the cooling system fan wrenches and it will not come out of there. Radiator, removal. And now I might be able to get the shroud out. That was one beat up old shroud, but hey, it still locks into position. So that's good. And of course, we now have access to the fan. Man, that dirt road life, everything's full of dirt. I'm so glad it's all getting swapped out. Uh, we just cannot get this fan off of here. Uh, Pat's here with me. We've tried for like, I don't know, 15 minutes. We've got a three foot pipe on the end of the wrench with a, with a special tool that is made to grab the water pump bolts and a crescent wrench on the other side with me standing on the crescent wrench and won't break loose. So I have the BMW specific tools. I just don't know where they're at. I, I've used them many times on E46s, on my E39. I don't know why I can't work on my old E53. We're gonna find it though. I'm gonna make some calls. We're gonna find that tool. It's here in the city somewhere. And uh, we'll get this finished up. So that is it for today, guys. We made a ton of progress here. The doors, every, basically we took everything apart today. So uh, this was the stripping the car of all the parts. I'll get this fan off of here. We will make that happen with the BMW tool. I just have to go find that. And in the next video, I should be able to show you uh, the new clutch, the new fan and the new water pump and then everything just sliding back in. We're not that far away. Cooling system does go together quick. Uh, of course, the window regulator, I'll show you that. Now that uh, Jake got it apart, it should be super easy to put back together. And oil change is already done. We're down to brakes and buttoning the car up. 
uh, tires. I'm gonna go get tires. Obviously, I'm not gonna do them myself on this. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watch where you get cool shirts, not like this. And please, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I'll talk to you next time. Shop update. I've been grinding away over here. Oh, sweet. Okay. Oh, huh. the light color changes, but it doesn't change anything yet because we haven't assigned this switch. Uh, anyway, so those are what the switches are going to look like. Those are scene controllers. We've got relays up in the ceiling. That's what that's low voltage out of the relay. Don't worry. It's like maybe 12 volts and that will those relays will control the dimming on the LEDs. Uh, I just got this girt down. You can see that the shop has super opened up. Use the forklift for that and uh, bolted everything back together. A lot of the, I'm finding a lot of the nuts and bolts are loose that happens on these buildings because they shift over time. So I've got my impact set up with a three quarter on it and I'm just hitting all the bolts, tightening everything back down on the building because uh, that should stop any rattles and noise. So we're getting there slowly but surely. And I just found a mouse. The mouse just jetted across the floor, ran in the insulation. Gotta go get mouse traps.